the marijuana industry is all about white privilege? <laughs> Who knew? Well, alas, once again, when it comes to the left, everything, and I mean everything, is about race, even when it isn't. Like most major cities in North America, Toronto is home to a free so-called alternative weekly newspaper called Now Magazine. It serves as a playbook for the social justice warrior set. For the rest of us, Now's newsprint makes for superb budgie cage lining. The latest affront, according to Now, is the number of white males in the cannabis business. Apparently, being white is bad and being male is bad. But being both white and male, well, <laughs> that's truly horrid. Here's what writer Lisa Campbell notes with regard to the domestic wacky tobacco business. Quote, when it comes to racial diversity, the numbers are even more shocking. Almost all of the country's 80-plus licensed producers are run by white dudes. The reality is that licensed producers push diversity as a marketing tool but don't walk the walk, end quote. Now then the article goes on to profile several women and people of color who are in the marijuana business. No issue there. Cannabis is going to be fully legal soon and everyone has a right to make a living. But why does Campbell have to couch an article about diversity in such bitterness? The way she spits out white dudes, like it's a pejorative term. Now, I've never partaken in marijuana. Heck, I've never even had a cigarette. You're looking at a real square here, folks. But when I think of marijuana, I don't necessarily think of whiteness. In fact, when I think of the nation most closely associated with cannabis, it's this place. Some fire on our hearts. No, that is what we call our right. Run, come, get some. Jamaica. And when I think of the two biggest pop culture icons linked to marijuana, it's these guys. Is that a joint, man? <laughs> that got there looks like a, a quarter pounder, man. <laughs> yeah, not exactly Snow White and the seven Royal Canadian Caucasian yachtsmen, is it? Not to be outdone on the marijuana and race file, Shri Haridkar also chronicles this subject in the Toronto Star in a truly bizarre column entitled, A Reckoning on Black People and Marijuana is a Long Time Coming. Shri, according to her bio, writes about discrimination and identity. Anyway, she wants the government to pass blanket amnesty for all past marijuana crimes. Her rationale for this amnesty, a disproportionate number of folks who have criminal records due to cannabis possession are black. What's more, these folks have the grassroots know-how of how to run the marijuana business and who could become contributing members of society. Gee, I guess those criminal records are preventing these ex-cons from getting jobs at the LCBO, the Liquor and Cannabis Bureaucracy of Ontario, which will be selling this stuff once it's legalized. But for anyone who was selling a substance when it was still illegal, sorry, you knew the risks. In any event, because this is the Toronto Red Star here, Shri doesn't miss a chance to also channel anti-Americanism in her cannabis and race rant. Check out this pithy prose, quote, Even the usage of the word marijuana, which comes from Mexico, came into being during the Prohibition era to warn off Americans by appealing to their xenophobic sensibilities with the suggestion that it could lead to an intermingling of the races, end quote. Wow, talk about reefer madness. What is Shri Paradkar smoking anyway? But when she sobers up, someone ought to tell Shri and her colleague at Now Magazine that if everything is racist, including the impending legalization of pot, then nothing is racist. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, if you like that rant, please consider becoming a premium Rebel subscriber and never miss another Rebel video.